Now, I know your research focused on couples in Vermont and that, um, you know, lots of different national news outlets have, you know, picked up on this, specifically the New York Times. Do you think that your research is generalizable to couples outside of Vermont? Does it, I don't know if you've done follow-up research with couples mm -hmm. outside of that, uh, mm -hmm. out of, outside of Vermont. Yeah, well, the Vermont sample was from all over the country, oh, obviously, okay. because it was the first time that anybody could come anywhere and get married mm -hmm. or have a civil union. But uh, in 2004, we actually surveyed Massachusetts couples who got married that year. That was the first year that same-sex couples could get married in mm -hmm. Massachusetts. You had to live in Massachusetts that year to get married. And we compared them to California couples who had domestic partnerships that year. That was before there was marriage in mm -hmm. California. And also to Vermont couples who had civil unions that year. And they looked very similar because really, um, you know, if you live in Massachusetts, you could get married. If you lived in California or Vermont, you couldn't. So these were couples who really wanted to legalize their relationships. And I would suspect if there were marriage in Vermont or in California that year, they would have chosen marriage. Mm -hmm. So actually an interesting thing would be to compare those couples who had domestic partnerships in California in 2004 to now what happens when they can get married. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on doing any follow-up research with the folks that have been getting married in California more recently? Um, we may, and we definitely are following that original set of Vermont couples who are from all over the country, and we ask them if they have since gotten married or had a domestic partnership, and of course a lot of them are from California, mm -hmm. because Vermont is a tiny state and only has half a million people, so only 20% um, of that group were actually from Vermont, the rest mm -hmm. were from all over the place, and the biggest numbers came from New York, California, Texas, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, you know, the mm -hmm. big states. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, I guess, what are your other future plans for following up on this research, um, if, if any outside of just maybe looking back on the same people that you've been sampling? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, each time we survey couples, we can throw in new measures if mm -hmm. we want. And one thing that has really interested me too is how same-sex couples divide housework and childcare. Mm -hmm. And not surprisingly, they do it in a more egalitarian way. Um, another um, challenge for heterosexual couples is even if they try to divide housework equally, you know, not all men know how to cook or even change a diaper and not all women know how to start the lawnmower or clean the car or things like that. So um, what you have is this obstacle then of, um, you know, one member of the couple is the apprentice and one mm -hmm. is the master and you know, have to really teach each other. And so what often happens is that women see that the laundry isn't being done well or the dishes or the floor and they sort of take over. Um, with same-sex couples, of course you can have couples where one partner does it all and one does less, but on average you've got two women or two men who either are both very good at the task or both very bad. And so they, they either have to share the task or they'll say, well, you know, I'll vacuum if you do the <laughs> childcare or something like so that. So it's more of a, a, a trade, I guess, without necessarily mm -hmm. taking back that responsibility, which is what I've seen in terms of heterosexual couple research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting.